I just I tell the audience about my theory about the red chair and why we've um, I've invited you as the skeptical man, um, called the skeptical man, um, to be my red chair and to explain from the customer perspective some of the things that we might take away and be mindful of as we try to sharpen our business and re-engineer it going forward. So, um, so very briefly, in everything, I believe that people should have a red chair. So when you're talking about things, when you're talking about making decisions, changing the shape of the business, marketing, presenting yourself to market, always ask the red chair who represents your customer what they think. So we might have a great idea, but actually the customer might think that just reeks of you know, self-interest. That just reeks of you trying to sell at me rather than listening to me. Could I let you introduce yourself? Because it, it's, it's fantastic and insightful and, and I just love your story. So you know, to the world, my friend, David Com. Well, good, uh, good afternoon, everybody, or good morning or good evening, depending on when you're listening to this. Um, I'm David. Yeah, I'm a, a seasoned, a grizzled, and, and, and some would even say a jaundiced retail veteran. Um, I've been in retail for 30 years and I've worked for some of the high streets most well-known names um, and a number of companies that used to be um, household names. I worked for Woolworths, WH Smith, uh, Snow and Rock Group and I'm now at a company called Heels which uh, sell very very nice furniture. Um, In terms of what I've done I've you know really I didn't start on the shop floor I'm not I'm not going to paint a picture of myself as being someone that drag myself out the gutter. But I have done strategy roles, I've done business planning roles, I've done marketing, I've done buying, and latterly I focus on e-commerce. So uh, digital, digital marketing, the whole e-commerce thing is, is what I focus on. I guess the question of you know, what, what entitles me to, to be here talking to you, and as, as Gary said, I am a purchaser, I guess. I'm a I'm a customer of services. I buy things. Um, I'm what you might call a prospect. You might call me a target. You might call me the mark. You might call me the mug. You know, I, I've no idea. But but I'm a person um, that buys things, and as such, I'm assailed by sellers of all sorts of things. Um, uh, and I guess. Uh, I describe myself, I think, as the most sceptical man in e-commerce, and that became quite a nice little little quote. But I guess the reason I'm talking to you here is because, as well as saying no to almost everybody, I do occasionally say yes, and and, and maybe it's interesting, sometimes even for me, to think, well, what you know, what what is it that that cuts through? What is it that causes me to say yes? Because I don't probably know the answer myself so so david do you want to explain to people how we know each other as well because i, I think oh, that's, yeah. you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's interesting when you start talking to people that, that you you um that you, you find out you've got a common interest uh, and we met well golf yes indeed yeah well i mean quite a lot of the time it's golf yeah for the for those of you that don't know gary is a is a great golfing enthusiast and um i think he's he's the living embodiment of the phrase all the gear but no idea um we tour pretty regularly and Gary can generally be relied upon to spend the most money, um, to buy the most drinks and to lo- lose the most golf balls. Uh, I, I, his golfing is pretty similar to his personality. In, in that when he's good, he's very good. But when he's bad, like, Jesus Christ, <laughs> it's all. So if we can understand, if we can sell to you, we can sell to anyone. And it, that, that's the challenge for this. Um, David, in this really noisy world, especially in e-commerce, what, what sort of things are your attention or, and pop to make you just think, do you know what, I, I lead our question of these people and see if that would help me? Yeah, I mean, look, there's a, there's a number of things, but I think if I was going to focus on one principal thing, it, it's to do your research. Um, it's to try and learn a little bit about my business, about the challenges we face, about the market we're in, and try and bring some insight to it. Now, I'm not, I'm not expecting you to know more about it than I do, but I am expecting you to have taken a look. So if you 
say to me, I'm a big fan of heels. Okay? Make, make sure you actually have looked at heels. Make sure you've visited us in a store and make sure you've looked at us online. If you say, I know a lot about the furniture industry, be, be prepared to back it up. And the only way you're going to back it up is, is by doing your research. So the first thing I would say is, is make sure you understand a little bit about my business, the market we're in, the competitors we're facing, and think about what our customers are, are dealing with at the same time. One of the things that I'm a massive fan of is insight selling, where typically I wouldn't do a huge amount of research on heels, but I would kind of think if organizations who are I would perceive to be in a similar market doing a similar thing, trading in a similar fashion, um, moving towards online, trying to um, be more global based on, on their online presence, trying to set their brand apart, um, justify higher prices, but, and they stink of, of quality online. So if you can think of an organization which is doing th similar things, I would leverage the projects and the, the programs that they're doing to say, by the way, I've worked with so-and-so on their Project Concord, an organization X with their, their projects around falafel. And, and I would then say, if, if organizations such as this are doing these things and I'm, I'm on board with that, I wonder if that's the direction you're going in, could I possibly talk to you about that? Have you got any challenges or is there anything stopping you going down that path? And would this be good for you personally? Would exactly. That, as, a, yes. a, as a conversation opener, would that be, would that be kind of cool? Because I wouldn't profess to be that interested or have the time to specifically look at heels, but I would be interested to think heels is an organization like this. I'd be sitting and trying to think of 30 organizations who are in the sim of the boat globally to say, if I've done it with heels, I can do it anywhere with these 30 brands. That's fair, isn't it? Yeah, I think. Get, get your attention. I think we're, we're all susceptible to um, receiving things. You know, we, we like being given things. We like being made to think we're smarter than we are. So yeah, I totally buy that if you've got insight, which is applicable to us, then we, we will appreciate that insight being delivered to us. And so, yes, it, it, it doesn't require you to be an expert in furniture. Um, in my case, because I'm e-commerce director, if you've got some great digital experience, if you really understand how companies are becoming more digital, how they're transforming the way in which their organizations work, if you understand how leadership works in, in that sort of business, when you're looking to transform from a, store-based model to a more digital model, that, that is grist to the mill. And I think most people in my position would appreciate uh, some insights into, into those issues. I think, yeah, I'm not expecting you to be the world expert on sofas and dining tables, but you've got to bring me something which is relevant to me and, and one other angle I would put on that, which I think is really important, which I find is, is missing from a lot of people that approach me, is, is understand the size of business that we are. Yeah. You know, we're not John Lewis with a thousand people in their digital department. We've got 10 people in our digital department. So we don't want to talk a lot about organization structure and succession planning. We want to talk about practical ways to move things on quickly whilst not spending a load of money. There'll be companies that have 50 people, companies that have 100 people. There'll be companies that are in startup mode. There'll be companies that are pretty well established. This is what you've got to understand. You've got to understand the sort of business we are, and you've got to modify your approach to be more relevant to me I'm talking about the fact that people are bouncing your name around in the marketplace and i just tickle tickle you as a trout just to say you know that your name is buzzing around i would talk to you about potentially becoming an advocate of mine so i'd like to win you and make you famous i would like to take you on a journey so that you your career is on the right trajectory and the things i like to achieve um, what things i like to do for you would probably be around efficiencies effectiveness 
uh, ticking boxes in terms of the programs you want to do, helping you become more ambitious about some of the things you want to do internally. Every time you go into a board meeting or, or a, a senior director's meeting, coming to me and trusting me to f um, populate your, your knowledge base, your data, so that when you go in, you can take talk about these companies are doing this, these organizations are doing that. We're here, should we try to get, go in the same trajectory or get keep up with these businesses? So I would, I would try to partner you. And also, if you're willing to open up your black book for me and help me, well, then there's a bit of reciprocity in there without breaking any, you know, um, um, you, know you don't have to bribe. There's no briberies out there. It's, it's businesses, you're just walking through the door with one of your friends and say, talk to these people. I, I yeah. wonder how many people have a direct approach to you about you. Well, I think that's a great approach. And, and of course, you know, in my position, as well as all the approaches that I get from people trying to sell me stuff and, and you know, recruitment consults amongst them, um, I obviously get a lot of uh, speculative calls from people talking about talking about me, but it's almost always you can see through it pretty quickly. <laughs> it's often sort of quite bogus, quite general, and you think, okay, you know, they're just trying to get a foot in the door. But when it's genuine, um, I think there's a lot of mileage to be had from it, and and I think this principle of giving, you know, if you're able to give insight, if you're able to make me look smarter. If you're able to help me in my career, then I'm going to reward you for that in some way, shape or form. And whether it's employing you, whether it's referring you, whether it's, um, you know, attending your events, you know, which I know is always a, a big deal for, for people. If you've helped me, I will help you. And, and that's why I think this broader concept um, you know, if you're just selling me people and charging me a commission, you know, at the end of the day, you look exactly the same as hundreds of other companies. If you can tell me a little bit about leadership, if you can put yourself in my shoes, you know, um, and, and my shoes are, you, you know, as a retailer, it, it's basically sort of 90% misery and 10% just broad unhappiness. You know, you, you can't even enjoy doing well, because if you do well, <laughs> you're, you're immediately thinking, God, we've got to annualize this next year. Um, and so, so I do think reciprocity is a big thing. I think we all want to be better, or if not actually be better, we want to appear better, we want to appear smarter. We want our lives to be less stressful, yeah. we want to be more efficient. Uh, we want to be happier. So, you know, for, for guys in your industry, help, help me do that um, and, and I will reward you. The, the other thing I would say, and, and this is something that has caught me a little bit unawares, but I find really um, effective, is create boards, create little non-executive boards um, you know, if I've got on my CV that I'm a, a non-exec, or I'm on the I'm on the advisory committee of Gary Goldsmith Incorporated, people are going to think, okay, well this this guy's got his finger in a few pies. What do you need to do in order to do that? You you can find seven or eight people like me. You pay me five hundred quid to attend a meeting once every three months. Maybe you discuss strategy. Maybe you flatter me by listening to what I've got to say and yet and suddenly you've got six or seven advocates out there who think Gary Goldsmith Inc is is a really interesting business um, I, I've actually done that with a couple of tech companies and you know it was only afterwards I thought bloody hell they got me you know how did how did they manage that if I wanted to win you as a friend and someone who would be an advocate for me and, and associates the business one, if you're always too busy to take my calls, you're going to start getting Domino's pizzas at lunchtime. Say, I've saved you a walk, get on the phone. And the other thing is, if I want to demonstrate that I know you, and I think, and if I keep saying, I think we'd work well together, I think there's some future in this. There's some collaboration here that I can smell. When I do get to see you, or if I don't get to see you, I'm going to send you a book. And I'm going to send you a book, which I just think that's um, surrounded by idiots. right? Or something that I think would, would actually might just... just you know, just do something that will break through those those barriers that, that will 
will we'll, we'll win you over. Well, there, there is and then, a, in the same there breath. Is, I was going to say there is a David. there's a there's a company uh, in the digital marketing sector who have started an e-commerce book club, um, and they're doing exactly that. They're they're picking a book a month or a book every two months, and they've now got a mailing list of whatever two hundred people who they send a book to. Now, how much does that cost? That's two. You know, that's two grand a time, and suddenly you've got two hundred people that not only appreciate having a book, because everyone appreciates having a book, they're reading the book, they're commenting on the book, they've got a reason to come back. And um, and this book club's been incredibly effective, you know, a really nice creative marketing tool that means I feel, I haven't used this company, but, but I feel far more um, inclined to them than anything else they might have done to get my attention. I think so. Love that. I've written down that, 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 that. This whole meeting was worth it just for that piece of gold. Suddenly, all my mates are going to be doing book clubs, so well done. Um, but then, let's, let's flip it. Let's talk about the no-nos. What things really just, just grate your cheese? What things just make you think, oh, not in a million years am I working with you, Popeye? Um, well, look, there's the obvious things, like um, you know, everyone's gone COVID crazy, haven't they? And so... There's always this idea that COVID is some completely different phenomenon, which you have to have a viewpoint on. I mean, we're not past COVID by any stretch of imagination, but but we're not, you know, this, our, for us, our stores will be open or they'll be shut. You know, that's about the main impact that COVID has. It's not, it's not having a fundamental difference to the way in which my business does does business. You know, we're still selling furniture to people that want to improve their life you know have a nicer home so i find that that's too easy it's too cliched and in 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 truth anything that's easy and cliched anything that is just repetition from what from what i've heard elsewhere is is uninteresting to me i think i think the second thing is that that's a massive thing for me is is a lack of humility yeah what, what, what I want to see more than anything else is, is empathy, yeah? Um, I don't mind confidence, yeah? But, but particularly for a retailer, re, you know, retailers basically fall into two camps. You're either intelligent or you're horrible, yeah? And in some cases, you're both, yeah? You're either somebody that sort of, you know, grew up buying things and was a real fucking hard case and wanted to screw the suppliers down at the ground, or you're somebody that was a bit more cerebral and can add up numbers and, and thinks things through. But, but in both cases, you hate to be told what to do. You hate, you, hate, you hate the thought that anyone thinks they're more intelligent than you are. It, it, and, and this is true of people generally, but it's a particularly true of retailers. So, so I want... I want the right balance of humility and confidence. Yeah, I, I cannot bear if somebody comes in and tells me um, this. This is this is what you've got to do. Um, and as I say, it, it's I'm not lying, but it's it's coming to me with a story that you can't actually back up um, is an ab absolute no no. You know, so I say whenever anybody says to me on LinkedIn or otherwise. Uh, I think we could be really useful to heels. Let's have a 15 minute chat or I'm a big fan of heels. The first thing I'll do is I will say, okay, tell me the last time you were in heels. Tell me the last time you bought something. Tell me what it is you particularly like about us. Otherwise, and, and of course it's a waste of my time doing that, but it, but it brings me a certain amount of pleasure to, to just to challenge that, that sort of hat oh, I really want to talk to you. I've really got something important well, for you. You know, it's so... I think you're, you're, I, I think you're nicer than me because I've got a lot of people who are trying to connect with me and they're just saying, I'm trying to extend my network. Um, hopefully we can connect. And I, I say, what the fuck's in it for me? <laughs> I, I don't need more friends. I, I, no. I, want, I want to connect with you because I want something. But yeah. That's just stupid. 
that does I mean, mean in a sense um, in a sense I yes. don't mind, so, I don't mind it when it's overt yeah I, d- I don't mind it if somebody says I, I have got something great it's going to cost you you know you know I want to sell it to you but I think if you I buy it that. it's I don't really mind that when it's a bit more overt but but it's you know we're not stupid we we can read between the lines of these things you know you constantly trading today whilst at the same time trying to work out what you're going to do in two months time and then also thinking how do how do i build strategy so you you're juggling in a, in a whole range of different areas and there's a bit of luck involved in approaches because at any given time i may be focusing on one or two elements of that my, my brain space is really limited and so i may be thinking about our brand proposition this week that may be what's really occupying me or i may be thinking about our customer service or i may be thinking about our display marketing on facebook that could be the thing that is really occupying the brain space right you know right now and if you happen to be the person that's lucky enough to be in that particular field at the time when i'm really thinking about it you know that, that's a lucky co- coincidence um, I think again, I just come back to what I said about about insights. Is if you're going to apply insights from other areas, if if you're going to um, try and create something that has cut through, it's it's got to be something that means something to me, and therefore you do have to understand my business. You have to understand. Um, how we right. work. you have to understand the, the issues that I'm dealing with. You don't have to understand all of them, but it's really helpful if you've got a real insight into into at least one of them. Yeah. So I think we we often like new things. Certainly, if you're talking to technology people, if you're talking to e-commerce directors, if you're talking to CIOs. Um, there's a real, you know, we're, by nature, we're all a bit attracted by bright, shiny things. If there's one thing that really annoys me is when I get an approach and it says, I'd really like to talk to you about your business and what your business issues are. And I think, <laughs> fuck, why, why would I want to do that? You know, what, you know I've got 101 issues. I, why do I want to talk to you about my issues? Just so you can pick off which area you think you can weasel in on. You know, so that's definitely a no-no. I would really like to talk, really like you to tell me about your business. Fuck off. The, the relationship is the foundation of um, every ongoing business relationship I've got. It's do I trust the people I'm working with? Do I like them? It helps, but it's not necessary. But do I trust these people? Can I have a tough conversation with them when I need to? Can I have a, a, a fun, productive conversation when I need to? So for me, nurture, relationship, work on it. Once you're in, you'll be in until until you make uh, you know until you mess things up. It's it's quite interesting. I think you've answered a different question perfectly. Okay. Uh, I, I think the question is, I think, um, sorry, that was no criticism in that at all. It, you've, you've just helped a lot of people in recruitment see from a customer's perspective, you think recruiters farm CVs and bang all these CVs out all the time, and you're not wrong, right? So a lot of businesses, if you was go back 20x weeks now, prior to the whole COVID malarkey landing, the way that people on perm made the most money was get a great candidate on Monday, farm into the whole wide world and try and get first interviews and you don't care about your relationship with the customer it's about getting a great candidate getting the first interviews get a great candidate getting the first interviews the minute the market changed it now it lends itself to be in a contract marketplace where you're talking to your customers how i can help you how i can add value what i'm talking about and you don't use cvs to do that and that's really interesting so the, the role that recruiters need to be working on massively is to change their perception with the customer and so because otherwise i'm never going to get an opportunity to have a relationship with you because you think rightly so 
we didn't get, give a shit about you for so long. Why suddenly as things changed? Why, why, why all of a sudden you stop hammering your CVs and you keep trying to say, friend, let's go out. Let's just, let's go play some golf. So what, what, what changed? It's, it's really interesting. So, so you've given us massive insight. That's, that's, and he said 2020 vision, but I'm never going to use that phrase ever again because 2020 vision is just depressing. Um, Thank you, David. Right, and just final question, and thank you very much for doing this, by the way. You, you're brilliant as ever. Um, what, what do you think we should do as, as businesses? I think you alluded to a relationship piece, but what as, as business owners, specifically my, my mob that are in recruitment, but there's going to be lots of people from different sectors really interested in this whole sort of relationship with, with, um, with I think, shall I call you prickly buyers or, or sophisticated buyers? How we can how we can do better, do more, with the bounce back coming if we're allowed out to go to work ever. Um, is is there something a sweeping statement that you can suggest to us how we can all do slightly better? We we touched on it earlier. For for me, you, you've you've got to understand a us and b where you genuinely add value. Yeah. And I think you, you, you touched on it earlier on is is if you focus on us, then focus, look not only at the organization, but look at the individual. If you can make me look better or if you can make the purchaser look better by delivering either real value or perceived value, making me look smarter, um, I will be a friend for life. Yeah. Um, if you just sell me something, you know, yeah, I might buy it off you once or twice, but you know, it becomes transactional. So where is it you're really adding value? How are you making me more successful? Um, and that, that, you, you know, it's probably always been true, but it's more true, I think, in a market that's going to be tougher. Um, um it's true for everything i buy to be brutally honest, it's true for everything i buy is does this make me more successful does it make me look better you know i i've, I've bought some software products and uh, they really work and i love going on speaker platforms conferences talking about them um it massively helps the company who've sold me the service but it makes me look good as well and and there's nothing i like more than that and especially coming from, uh, from from reason but shave your tash <laughs> exactly. coming from, um, great piece of advice you're, you're a friend for life okay. yeah i always will be um when um coming from retail you know that customers are fickle buyers are fickle all the time but if you can make the experience a joyful one and everyone walks away thinking that was fun you'll go back to that shop repeatedly um david um you are a legend thank you so much um I did throw this up upon you and uh, I just knew you'd come out dancing. So thank you very much, sir. I look forward to uh, losing more golf balls with you soon, if we can ever get out. Um, love to family, love to burn. You can go back and play golf now. So enjoy. And I hope to see you very... Brilliant. And I hope to see you very soon, sir. So I'm part of the RDLC and the, the bigger community. You rock. Cheers, bub. Love to you, Gary. Bye.